you can mute your um, video uh, and then switch over to presenter view. We're just gonna wait for a few more people. We'll speaker hold view. for a few minutes. Uh, speaker view, sorry, yeah. Hi everybody, welcome. Um, so we're just asking everyone um, if you can mute your video um, and then switch over to the speaker view. Uh, I think that will be um, the best option uh, for the initial part of the meeting. Um, if you have any questions along the way, you can uh, feel free to I'll post them in the chat, but we will have a Q&A section uh, uh, later on, and uh, we'll happily take questions. Um, All right, Maddie, are we still waiting on more people to come in? I think we could get started if we want to, and I can just keep letting people in um, as they join the waiting room. Okay, sounds good. So um, again, we're just asking everyone if you can, if you can mute your video. Um, uh, if you could go ahead and mute your video. Uh, and then switch over uh, to the speaker view mode. That would be great. Um, you can mute the video down at the bottom of the Zoom interface. You can just turn off your webcam there. Great. Okay. So hi everybody, my name is Billy Clark. I'm the artistic director of Culture Hub. Uh, I'm here with other members, uh, team members uh, from Culture Hub, including um, Maddie and Deandra and Sangmin. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is give just a, a, an overview of what Live Lab is and uh, why we created Live Lab, just a little bit of um, uh, a history behind that. And then I'm gonna explain a little bit about uh, uh, what Live Lab does and, and, and what it's good for and, and, and what it doesn't do. Um, and then I'm gonna pass uh, the mic over to Deandra, who's gonna give a more technical uh, overview uh, of the Live Lab interface. Uh, we have Jean here as well from the Culture Hub team. Um, and then, uh, and, and we'll, uh, I show a workflow that uses Live Lab uh, to do multi-locational uh, live streaming. Um, so uh, I'll start with a little bit of um, just a background on, on Live Lab and how it came about uh, and what it does. So about um, when Culture Hub was founded uh, by La Mama and the Seoul Institute of the Arts about 10 years ago, just over 10 years ago, uh, we started exploring the internet as a mechanism for uh, creating multi-locational uh, events, um, uh, both in the performing arts and education, um, but in over the uh, course of our 10 years, we've, we've worked um, extensively using a variety of different uh, technologies um, to uh, basically connect venues uh, in different locations. 
for the purpose of creating sort of telematic exchanges. Uh, and so Live Lab came about um, out of sort of frustrations with existing tools uh, that were available in the marketplace. Uh, we were working a lot with um, uh, hardware video conferencing systems uh, and these um, had a lot of limitations. The, the first uh, problem that we had with them is they were extremely costly. They, they cost uh, sometimes upwards of $30,000. Um, and while they were uh, good at um, transmitting low latency and high resolution uh, video and audio streams, they were extremely challenging to implement uh, and to, to use. Um, and, uh, and to maintain. And uh, one of the biggest challenges that we faced was, um, uh, you know, obviously uh, the lack of access uh, based on cost uh, and also based on um, just the technical know-how and infrastructure that you would need to implement these tools, um, but also in the way that they were designed not for the creative industries. And so the user interfaces and the way that they routed media um, didn't really work always uh, uh, in the way that uh, creative artists uh, wanted to use these tools. And so we um, began um, uh, imagining that perhaps there was a way to develop our own tool that would um, uh, would work better uh, to uh, help facilitate the types of creative exchanges that we were seeing that artists wanted to, to produce. Um, so we, um, we got a small uh, uh, NISCA technical assistance grant uh, and we were introduced through our network uh, to Olivia Jack, who's a creative coder that's been working on with us on Live Lab uh, for uh, the past five years, and we developed uh, a prototype, um, and uh, and we did a feasibility study, and we uh, found that what we thought we we could potentially produce uh, might be feasible, and so we embarked uh, over the you know uh, last five years to kind of make several iterations of um, of Live Lab, and about a year ago we uh, transitioned from using hardware, the hardware video conferencing systems to using a live lab exclusively for um, our classes and our productions. Then in March, um, the, uh, the pandemic hit um, the US and um, we felt a need um, to uh, work towards bringing this uh, this tool um, to the public, um, which was something that we had always intended to do. Um, but I think that the pandemic certainly put a fire uh, underneath us to 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 move that uh, forward more rapidly. So we launched um, a, uh, a collaborative program with La Mama called Downtown Variety, a weekly variety show that was produced using Live Lab uh, and streamed online for audiences to watch. And um, along that process of producing this weekly show, we were also testing and working um, with creative coders. Uh, I think Tong is in the house as well, who, who is another contributor uh, to uh, the Live Lab uh, project. Um, and, uh, Basically, ultimately, over the course of about a two-month uh, period, we were able to um, polish and um, restructure the code of Live Lab in order to create a public release. So now, Live Lab is publicly available um, in beta form at livelab.app, and we are um, yeah trying to build a community uh, around it and also explore. Um, yeah, how people want to use it uh, and what new features uh, we should be thinking about, including uh, tracking down bugs, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is the first of what we hope will become a monthly meetup. And while we will maybe take a, kind of a lead, the Culture Hub team will take a lead 
um, sort of providing instruction uh, and information about Live Lab in the initial few sessions of this meetup, our end goal is that it will be something that will uh, be run more in a communal uh, and decentralized fashion and that we it'll be an opportunity for uh, people to share how they're using live lab and also to share different workflows different methodologies um, for using the tool um, and so um, yeah I think that's that's uh, a pretty good overview of, of why uh, what live lab the background on live lab and, and why we're here today um, so I'll just tell a little bit about what Live Lab is, um, and then uh, and then I'll pass it over to Deandra. So, so our original intention for Live Lab was, as I mentioned, was to replace video conferencing systems. So our uh, as we were developing Live Lab, we always imagined that it would basically be a router for audio, video, and uh, and data. And that these would be um, the tool would be really used to link physical locations in space. So you could take your video feeds and you could spatialize them around your venue uh, for whatever uh, type of um, exchange that you were doing with with remote locations. Um, but again, because of the pandemic, we started realizing that there was another potential, which is that we, we could also um, use it to produce these multi-locational live streaming events as well. And um, so I think that what we're gonna focus on today is, is really on that workflow and how we use Live Lab, what Live Lab does, and then how you use um, other pieces of software to then route the, the video, conferen video conferencing feeds that are within Live Lab out to a live stream. And without further ado, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Deandra. Hey everyone, I'm Deandra, and yeah, nice to meet you all virtually. Um, so to, before we jump into Live Lab, um, I know we're going to have a lot of questions and we're going to get to kind of a Q&A section toward the end. So as your questions kind of come to you, you can just write them in the chat and once we get to the end, we'll fill through some of those. Um, any issues you may be having, again, you can write that in the chat to, uh, to Maddie and Maddie probably will you know, feed that to us. Um, if we have to stop at any point, just just let us know. And if um, if if you have a question and you don't want to forget it, you can put it in the chat, or you can use the raise hand function. I think we have that. Um, and when we get to the Q and A portion, then I'll just uh, ask people to unmute and uh, and start your video if you'd like in order to ask those questions once we're at that point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I think we can jump into Live Lab. So before we actually jump into Live Lab, one, I'm sharing a screen. So she, you guys should be able to see a screen right now that has um, an incognito window. I don't know if it's in presenter mode. It might be in presenter mode. But you should see a share screen that should have a Chrome window open. You might see an application called it back. Okay, yeah, I see a thumbs up, which means you guys see it, cool. Um, cool, so let's get started. So before, um, anybody joins in with Live Lab, the two things that you should know is that one, Live Lab currently doesn't work on iOS devices or it doesn't support iOS devices, that being iPhones and iPads. Um, it does support Android devices, um, but right now it does not support um, iPads or iPhones or any iOS devices. The second thing is that Live Lab works in Chrome, right? So we don't wanna be using Safari, don't wanna be using Firefox, we wanna be using Chrome, for Live Lab to use it in its full capacity, okay? So there's two important things to note before you jump or delve into Live Lab, right? So now you guys see my window and I'm going to go to Live. Not Live, Live, Lab.app, enter. So this takes me to my landing page of Live Lab and I'm gonna make this window bigger so that you guys can see it bigger. This takes me to the landing page of Live Lab, right? So I see a bit of information here. I see that I have a camera function, I have a mic function, and I have um, a little person here that says name. But the first thing I wanna do is, up top here, I see that a uh, little pop-out window popped out and it says livelab.app wants to use your microphone. 
So I'm gonna press allow on that and ask me the same question for my camera. I'm gonna press allow on that. Now, if that pop-up window doesn't come out for you, that just might mean that you have to go into some advanced Chrome settings and add livelab.app as a website that you give permission to use your camera and your microphone, okay? So once I do that, I see that now next to this camera and this audio, now I have a source, right? So I have CamTwist, which is a, um, a virtual camera application um, as my video source, and then I have an audio source, right? So I'm gonna leave CamTwist for now as my uh, video source, and I'm gonna leave this microphone as my audio source. Now, you do have the option to join into Live Lab with no video and no audio. That might be helpful for maybe a technician who wants to kind of be a fly on the wall, make sure everything's going well in Live Lab, but necessarily doesn't want to take up space in the room, right? You have the option to join Live Lab with no video and no audio. You will still be able to chat, you just wouldn't be able to talk or nobody would see your video, right? And if I click on that drop down, you'll see that you have those options. You have the no video option, and for the mic, you have the no audio option. So now under that, I'm gonna write my name where it says name. I'm gonna put Deandra so everybody knows who I am. And then I'm gonna head over to this settings button. So if I click on the settings button, it takes me into a window that's just some advanced settings. So you have the option to change your video resolution. So under width and height, you can change your video resolution to whatever you need it to be, right? And the way to verify that is if you go up here a little bit and you see where it says video preview, next to video preview right now, it says 640 by 360. So that's the resolution I would be going into Live Lab at. So this verifies next to video preview where it says that resolution, that verifies the resolution resolution you're going into Live Lab with. Okay. You also have the same options. You have the video input, so you can select your video source from here. You can select your audio source from here. And then if you scroll down, you have some audio processing options. So if you're doing something that's more audio based, you can play with having um, echo cancellation, audio gain, and noise suppression unchecked, right? So this window is just some advanced settings that you can play with before going into Live Lab. So for now, I'm going to save and I have everything set up. So I have my audio source, I have my video source, I have my name, all that stuff. So I'm gonna press start and I'm gonna join. So now I'm in Live Lab, but I want other people to join into my Live Lab room. So how do I do that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that URL. I'm gonna to go to my email and I'm gonna email that to some people so that they can join. Don't be trying to steal my password now, people. So let's email that to three. Send. So I've emailed that to Billy and Maddie. And that link lives on. So if been if by chance that you it's you creating a link that will later exist, so you might not need it. Currently, you might need it later on. That link will still exist, right? Because you just sent it to somebody. So if you need to get back to that link, you can just click on that link you sent and it'll take you back to that room, right? So I sent them that link. All they have to do is click on the link. It'll take them to the landing page of Live Lab. They'll put all their information in and they'll join. Bam, Maddie is here. So now if I hover over my Cam Twist feed, Right at the bottom of my campus feed, it says my name, it says Deandra. The next to my name, it has a little camera function. So if I click on that function, what it does is it mutes my video, right? And if you also hover over those icons, it will tell you what they do as well. So that mutes my video. Now next to that, there's a little microphone. If I click on that, that mutes my audio, right? So I have something, I can mute my video, I can mute my audio. Now to the right of that, you have a little box with an arrow that comes out of it. I click on that. 
it popped me up into another window. But what that does is it creates, let me bring it out. Come on, baby. Hmm? Say it again. There you go. So I pop out that window. And what it does is it creates, excuse me, it creates an output window that I can use, for example, for if I have an external monitor and I wanna take somebody's feed and I wanna connect it to that external monitor. I can drag that feed into the external monitor. If I have a projector and I wanna have a feed in, <laughs> in that projector, I can take that feed and put it into a projector, right? And you can do that for the feeds, all the feeds in the room. So I can do that for Billy's feed. If I hover over Billy's feed, let me just take the window up a little bit. If I hover over Billy's feed, I have that option to pop out his window as well, right? And I can move him around wherever I wanna move him. And I also have that same option for Maddie. If I pop her out, I can move her wherever I want to, right? So now if I pivot to the right, I see that next to Maddie's feed, there's a bunch of icons on the right-hand side. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see clear. So we're gonna go from top to bottom. So the first icon is that same function as the video, the camera one that we did over my cam twist feed. So if I do that, it meets the video. Same audio, if I click on that, that meets my audio. Under that, in that little monitor with the plus sign in it, that allows me to share my screen. So I can share my entire screen I can share an applica a specific application window. So if I have iTunes open, if I have um, OBS open, I can share that specific window. And then I have a Chrome tab option. So if I have a specific Chrome tab I wanna share, I can do that. Now under that, I have a little round circle with a plus in it. Because on that, what that allows me to do is add another media stream. And the way that that works is, or the way it can be useful is, for example, I can say I have two camera feeds. So I have my FaceTime camera, but I want another, I want another view. So I want to view from a webcam, for example, I can add another video input source. So in this drop down, I can select another video input source or audio if you're using audio. And then I'll be able to add that into this room, right? So I have my source that I joined their room with initially, and then I can add another video or audio source, right? Now under that, I have the hangup, which I'm not gonna press on now because it take me out of the room. If you go further down in this little settings button, I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna pop out a window. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck the stretch to fit. And now you see that I actually can see the actual resolutions of Maddie. I see that Maddie's coming in uh, not a 16 by nine, but I, you can see that my cam twist is, right? So now I can see their actual resolution. I can see their, their, the room that they have in their, in their video. Now under that, I have column layout. If I click on column layout, what that does Hmm? Yeah, what that does is it's gonna create, it's gonna push my feeds to the side and create a column where everything will line up, right? I'm gonna X out of these. So now you see a better idea. Let's look at the chat. So now you see that 
these columns are no longer, or these pop-out windows are no longer covering Maddie's feed, right? They pushed our feeds to the side and they created a column that then all the little icons I pop, I click on, it will pop them to that column. Now in that settings button, we also have a number of output switchers function. And we'll come back to that. Let me just finish all the icons and then we'll come back to the number of output switchers because that will allow us to go into um, window capture and streaming. I'm gonna X out of that settings. And one thing to note is that any changes you make, so for example, if I click on that stretch to fit or uncheck that stretch to fit, that's all on the end user side. So that only affects what I see on my side. That's not gonna affect what everybody sees in their layout. If Billy wants to see the same layout as um, that, he's gonna have to uncheck it on his side. So any changes I make on my side of Live Lab does not affect the whole room. It only affects what I personally, Deandra, see, okay? That's an important note to, to keep in mind. So I'm gonna X out of that for now. Under that settings button, I also have an uh, audio mixer. So what that allows me to do is it allows me to control the volume of Maddie and Billy as well as the overall output um, sound. So for example, if Maddie's talking and I'm like, I'm really tired of hearing Maddie, I can lower her, her, her volume. Same goes for Billy. If at some point he's talking, I'm just like, eh, I'm tired of this. I can lower his volume. We came in with no audio though. So that's yeah, why you don't, so see, you don't it. see it currently. Um, and then also you can obviously take down the overall output volume. So you can take down the volume of the whole, the whole room. Then under that, you have the chat function. So if I wanna talk to Maddie or Billy, I can write, hey. Um, again, if you end up joining in Live Lab for some reason with no video, no audio, for example, they've joined in with no audio, so maybe we need to communicate. I can chat with them, I can write, hey, and we can chat in that chat function. And that chat function goes to everybody. So if you send a chat, be mindful that everybody can see it. It's not, I'm just sending a chat to Maddie, it's I'm sending a chat to the whole room, okay? Then under that chat function, I have three little miniature people. And if I click on that, that shows me the participants in the room. So right now I can see everybody in the room. I see myself, Deandra, I see Maddie, and I see Billy. I also see the resolution that they're coming in at. So I see that Maddie is coming in at a 640 by 480, and I'm coming in at a 640 by 360. And that's why our videos look differently. Also the same for Billy, he's coming in at a 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second, right? So that's a good thing to note also when maybe you have somebody that's in the room with no video, no audio, um, you can probably see them participants, but you just won't physically see them in the space, right? So let me X out of that. Now I'm gonna go back to that settings button. I'm gonna click on that settings button and I'm gonna go to number of output switchers. So in Live Lab, the cool thing is that um, we have video switchers built in. So what I can do is I can create an output window and I can switch between feeds in Live Lab with, for example, if I just want one output window, I can switch between Maddie, my own feed and Billy, right? So let me show you an example of that. So I'm gonna create one switcher for now. And what's gonna happen is above that settings button, there's gonna be a little monitor with an A that pops up, right? So I'm gonna click on that. And now I see that I have a pop-out window that says switcher A, right? Now, if I come over to, let's use Maddie's feed, I see now that next to that little pop-out with an arrow, it says Maddie has a camera, this little box with an arrow. Now there's an A that wasn't there before. So if I click on that A, what that does is it sends Maddie's feed to switcher A. I also know that because it has a huge A on top of her face, right? So Maddie's feed is going to switcher A and there's a huge A on top of her feed. So that allows you to know where what feed is going into, right? So I have that one switcher. Now, if I go back to where it says switcher A, on the right hand side of Maddie's feed, I have a little, it looks like a scrolling knob. Now, what that allows you to do is that allows you to fade. We don't really use it much, but it is there. So that allows you to fade to black. Currently, we do not have a crossfade, um, but that's something we're hoping to have eventually in the future. But right now you can sort of fade to black, right? 
What I can also do is next to switcher A, there's a little box with the pop the arrow out of it, which is the same little icon that we had um, when we popped out those individual feeds. So I click on that. What that does is it pops out Smatty's my switcher A um, window, right? And it clearly says Live Lab switcher A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually X out of that for a second. And I'm gonna also go to Billy's feed. And I see that on Billy's feed, he also has that A. So if I wanna switch, I can switch to Billy's feed. If I wanna switch to this cam twist feed, I can switch to that cam twist feed, that cam twist feed. And that big A is gonna follow each feed that I click on. So I know that that specific feed is going to that specific switcher, that switcher A switcher. So I'm gonna create another switcher. I'm gonna now you see that that little monitor with the B on it popped out. Now, if I have over Maddie's, I also have a B there. So I'm gonna send Maddie to B and then I'm gonna send Billy to A, right? So now I have two switchers and I have Billy in one and Maddie in one. And if I want, I can switch between, I can have them go to which, whichever switcher I want them to go to. And I'm gonna pop out each switcher. So I'm gonna pop out switcher A, which has Billy and I'm gonna move him a little lower here. And I'm gonna pop out Maddie. I'm gonna move her a little bit lower here. So as for Live Lab, that's kind of the, the um, functionalities of Live Lab, right? Now I wanna take the feeds that I have in Live Lab and I wanna get them into a stream. So I popped out Maddie's, um, that switcher A and that switcher B. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make Live Lab a little bit smaller. And now I see that I have Maddie and Billy's that Live Lab switcher A, so it should be here. One thing to know also is that right now, um, well, Live Lab has a max of four switchers. Um, I don't imagine you anybody would need more than that, but if they do, at that point, then you would have to pop out those individual feeds, right? But right now I have two switches. I have switcher A, switcher B. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on audio for a quick second because now I need to get, I have their video feeds, now I have to get their audio feeds. So for Mac, we use an application called Loopback. Um, the equivalent of that for Windows would be voice meter. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to capture my Chrome um, audio and then my streaming encoder, my streaming application will be able to grab loopback as the audio input. But I'll show you obviously how to do that. So right now I have loopback open. And what I'm gonna do is at the bottom left-hand side, I'm gonna create a new virtual device. I'm gonna change it to input for now. So I know which one to switch, press enter. I'm gonna select under sources, I'm gonna select this pass through. And then at the bottom, there's a little trash with a, with a delete. I'm gonna click on that to delete that pass through because we don't need that. Now next to sources, there's a little plus with an arrow. I'm gonna click on that drop down, And as you can see, I have an abundance of applications I can use. So I can be catching the audio from OBS. I can be catching the audio from Zoom if I have um, something like iTunes open, I can catch the audio from there or Spotify. So you can catch audio from multiple applications, but for right now, I need it from Live Lab. So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna select Google Chrome, right? And now I have, um, now basically I've set up a, a virtual input device. So if I go back to my Chrome and let me go to YouTube really quickly. Let's play something. I play something, I see that I'm getting feedback. So Lubeck is recognizing my Chrome audio, right? So I'm gonna X out of that. And go back to Lubeck. So Lubeck, I created a virtual input device. But now I need to hear that sound, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going at the bottom left-hand side where it says new virtual device. Again, I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna create a monitoring, sorry, monitoring setup. I'm gonna type in monitoring. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna select on that pass-through. 
I'm going to delete it. I'm going to add Google Chrome. Now, if I, next to sources, it says output channels and next to output channels, it says monitor. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add my um, internal speakers as my monitoring system. And now I have both an input device that I can take into Streamlabs and I also have a monitoring system that I'll be able to hear what's going on and monitor the sound, right? Now again, for Windows, this would be equivalent, uh, the equivalent would be voice meter. Um, voice meter is free, loopback is not. After 20 minutes, loopback creates static sound um, and it is $100, I believe. I think it's just one flat rate of $100. So that's one thing to keep in mind um, when looking into it. So make that smaller. And now I'm gonna to go to Streamlabs OBS. Streamlabs OBS is gonna be my streaming encoder and Streamlabs OBS is under the OBS world. So it is similar to OBS. Um, I think it just depends on what you need it for and what your preferences are. We like it for um, window capture. So we use Streamlabs OBS versus regular OBS. But again, it's all in your preference. But it is very, very similar in that you can lay it out the same, you add your sources the same, you stream the same. So if you know OBS, you will know pretty much Streamlabs OBS. So now I have Streamlabs OBS open. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this little four box at the left-hand side. What that allows me to do is that allows me to um, customize my layout. So I'm gonna customize it similar to how I have OBS, right? So I have a scene selector I have a source selector, I have an audio mixer, and at the top, I'll be able to see what I'm doing. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my settings, so that the bottom left-hand side, I'm going to go to, I believe it's output. Let's see. This video. I'm dead, Andrew. Video. I'm going to go to video. And where it says base canvas resolution, I want to make sure that my canvas is the size of what I'm streaming to. So my resolution for streaming, I'm going to make 720. So I want to make sure that my base canvas is 1280 by 720. Again, that's going to change depending on what you're streaming with and what you're doing. But for us, it's 1280 by 720. Then I'm going to select done. And I'm also going to select save changes for the custom layouts that I've created. I think we're in studio mode. Okay. So under scene, I'm going to create a, well, I have a scene already there. So if I just double click on that scene, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two scenes. I'm going to create a host scene and then I'm going to create a, um, a performer scene. So I have my artist and I have my host. So I'm going to rename this scene that's already there. Post and done. Now, if I go next to the scenes, I see that I have a source. So here, this is where I'm gonna be selecting um, my switcher. So I'm gonna select that little plus button. I'm gonna select window capture, add source. Then I'm gonna rename it host and add source. Then I'm in this little drop down. I'm gonna select what I want it to be. So I know that Maddie's going to switcher B. So I'm gonna select switcher B and Maddie's gonna be my host in this scenario, in most scenarios, cause she hosts downtown variety too. So I'm gonna select switcher B and I'm gonna select done. So now Maddie is my host and I see that I have Maddie's feed in here. Now right now it's in studio mode 
but we're gonna work with it. So now I'm gonna right click on Maddie's feed, which is also the canvas. I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna drop down to transform and I'm gonna select fit to screen. Then I'm gonna right click again on Maddie's feed in that canvas, transform, edit transform. And in Maddie's feed, you can see at the top, it says blank and I have all the, that information that I really don't want. So I'm gonna crop the top out I'm gonna guesstimate at like 54. I'm gonna press done. Again, I'm gonna right click on Maddie's feed. Transform, fit to screen. And now I have Maddie's feed and Streamlabs, right? Now I have Maddie's feed, but I don't have her audio. So now in that same plus button, I'm gonna select that plus button. I'm going to select audio input capture. Oh, but I don't have my audio coming in. Should I? Oh, that's fine. We know, we saw that we got some, some feedback when I played that YouTube video. So we know that in Chrome, we're getting audio. So you're good. Add source. I'm gonna name it. I'll just name it loopback because it's coming from loopback. But I can also name it Maddie's or just Chrome. I'll name it loopback. Same thing, that drop down. I'm gonna select input, which is what I named my, um, my loopback audio input, and then done. So now I have Maddie's feed and Maddie's audio. So I have the host feed and the host audio. Now I wanna create something for my, um, my artist, which is Billy. He's the, the, the talent. So I'm gonna rename that to artist. Done, I created a new scene. Again, gonna go to source, click that plus button next to source, select window capture, add source. I'm gonna uncheck this and I'm gonna do add new source instead. I'm gonna name this artist, add source. Again, in that drop down. now I'm gonna select switcher A Press done. And now I have Billy's feed. I'm going to transform his stuff. I'm going to right click, transform, fit to screen. Again, right click, transform, edit transform. I'm going to crop the top of his, that information that I don't need. Again, he estimate about 54. Done. And then right click again transform fit to screen. So now I have Billy's feed. Again, I need Billy's audio. So I need the Chrome audio, the loopback audio. So I'm gonna add another source. I'm gonna add input capture, audio input capture, add a source. And I don't need to add a new source because it's all that same loopback feed, that, all that same loopback input. So instead of doing add new source instead, I'm just gonna select my loopback I'm gonna add that same source. So now I have Billy's feed and his audio. And now I can switch between host and artist, right? What I also can do is if I go back to Live Lab and I wanna make Maddie go to switcher A, I can click A and Maddie will switch to switcher A, right? Now in Streamlabs, you also can do PIP. So you can um, have two people next to each other and talking to each other. Um, you can do pretty basic I mean, basic, basic, basic um, video processing. Like you can do a little bit of composite, maybe take some saturation out. That's super, super basic. Um, if you want to delve deeper into maybe effects, you would need uh, another application. Um, for example, the one we use being VDMX. Um, but yeah, that's Streamlabs. So you created a host and you created an artist. Now I want to stream, right? So if I go down here to my settings, and I click on stream here. I don't wanna mess up our actual stream. So maybe, let me just see YouTube. I'll just show you guys how it looks. So here I wanna to stream to YouTube, for example, I'll sign into my YouTube. I'll go to here where it says that little camera with the plus inside, create, then I'll say go live.
from there. Um, I will put in my stream information. So I'll put my name. It's unlisted because this is a test. No, not made for kids. Create. And then in that YouTube stream, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a stream key and it's going to give me uh, a stream URL that I will copy to my OBS settings. So next to under URL, I'll copy that stream URL and paste it into there. And next to stream key, I'll copy that stream key and paste it into there. Then done. All right. So basically I have, I filled all that, that information in. So once I was ready to go live, I would just press go live at the bottom of Streamlabs. And then I also would go live here in, um, in YouTube and then I'll be live to YouTube, All right? So that's the basic workflow of getting feeds from Live Lab into Streamlabs. You create output windows or output switchers. You make sure you capture your audio from Chrome in uh, application, we use loopback. Um, you can use something like black hole or um, Soundflower. I know I don't think they create for Soundflower or it doesn't work as much anymore. Then from there in your streaming encoder, which could be stream OBS or regular OBS, from there you create your scenes, capture your sources, and then stream to the world wide web. And that's my spiel on things. I think now we can get into. Wow, uh, thanks, Deandra. That's awesome. Um, so I think now we're ready to take questions. Uh, we've been answering a lot of them in the chat. So obviously feel free to check out the chat if you haven't been. Um, but if you want to raise your hand, uh, we, could, we could actually bring you into uh, the stream here uh, if you want to ask your questions. Just keep in mind that we are live streaming. So uh, please make sure that you feel comfortable uh, with that. And Maddie will. Um, I'm gonna ask Justin to unmute. Great. And Here. yeah. Hey. Cool. Hey, quick question. Have you been uh, using any other um, streaming services for audio? In and do you notice any difference in quality, for example, um, Source Connect or Clean Feed? for the purpose of bringing like live musicians into a feed with audio only? Hmm. I don't think that we have um, done that, have experience doing that um, specifically. Those uh, we have used in a couple of our productions. And let me see if Mike can get past my mental block. Songman, are you there? Is it called the multi channel audio routing? So, I mean, what's the Jack Trip? Got it. Uh, we've used Jack Trip in the past uh, for multi channel audio. Uh, we actually did a concert in the, um, in the winter with Korea between UCSD and, um, and Seoul, uh, where we had musicians playing live. Um, and we used uh, Live Lab for the video source, and we use Jack Trip for the audio routing. Um, it's much more complicated and requires uh, a you know, much more difficult um, audio setup. We did do some side-by-side -side testing of the audio latency, and we found that Live Lab is pretty close. Jack Trip beats it by a little bit. Um, and there are some interesting workarounds if you want to explore multi-channel audio. Um, I think that's still very much an emergent area of the web. Uh, and we hope that eventually Live Lab will be a multi-channel uh, uh, audio router as well. Right now it's not truly. I mean, you, you can mix your, your stereo output, but you can do things like add multiple tabs so you can join from one computer uh, using another tab and you can um, 
sort of route based on the tabs because uh, there's different softwares that can grab based on the tab. So there are some kind of funky things that you can do uh, currently using Live Lab to route multi-channel audio. Uh, we've also used um, Audio Hijack, which is another tool made by Rogue Amoeba um, that makes loopback uh, to sort of grab different things and route them and patch them in interesting ways. Um, but yeah, still emerging uh, Live Lab as an audio tool. Although if you do have plug in your audio interface, it'll read that and, um, and that significantly significantly improves audio quality, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. Um, so we look and same goes for video. If you have a proper ingest device and you have the proper tools, you can also have a camera come into Live Lab and use that as your video source. Um, so yeah, we can do that for both audio and video to improve those. those yeah. Needs. And you can add um, also in the add media function, which I think Deandra showed, uh, you, can, you can add additional audio sources to the mm -hmm. call, right? So you could have, say, your built-in microphone and then also add a new audio um, uh, from the same computer and from the same device. You could bring in another source, you know, that you're piping in using you know, uh, black hole or loopback or or some kind of uh, virtualization software. Thank you. I'm asking Tyree to unmute. Cool. I don't know if you can see me. I'm... Yeah, we can see you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hi, Billy. How are you, by the way? <laughs> good. How are you? Doing good. So, um, I've used Streamlab OBS, of course, for several of our shows. And I think, um, Maddie, you probably just answered my question down in um, the chat. Since it's only uh, 68 participants, is there at some point um, the idea to expand this? Because right now, of course, we use, um, for our two shows that we've done here in the spring, um, we use, of course, Zoom. But of course, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with Zoom. Of course, we can't always rely on it as well. Is yeah. There is there a way to expand the participants that can work? So, so, so yes, um, a couple, couple of strategies. So currently what we've been doing, you know, because we're uh, often doing shows that have more than, um, you know, even in downtown variety, we'll, we'll have, you know, sometimes seven, you know, including the technicians, right, that are involved, mm -hmm. which are also all distributed. You know, might, maybe we have like 12 or 15 people that are participating in that show. And one of the ways that we've done is we've designed a backstage room, right? And we have a technician in that room. And then that uh, technician is in, we, we use a sort of comms system. Like we'll use, we've been using FaceTime, sort of what we've, we've settled upon. Um, uh, and we are, what, you know, all in communication across the multiple locations. And then we're routing people into the stage area as needed. Now, obviously that's not going to solve every single scenario if you're doing a play and there's supposed to be eight people on stage, you know, so forth and so on. Basically, there's no limit to how many um, people can be within a peer-to-peer -peer connection in Live Lab. There's nothing that's stopping you from adding more except for limitations of bandwidth, um, CPU, uh, and basically hardware. And that those are real limitations. And we sort of feel that, you know, around six to eight is about where it kind of maxes out. Uh, CPU starts to, to, to really um, suffer. Uh, now, in terms of future uh, possibilities for expansion, so one of the advantages to WebRTC is that it is peer to peer. So it's a disadvantage and an advantage. So it makes it um, less latent because you're not going through a server. Uh, so you and and that also makes it, um, I think, more uh, you know, underground in a way, in the sense that you're also not going through some sort of corporation server. They're not uh, extracting data. WebRTC is inherently um, encrypted, um, and you're you're really the the server. All the server is doing is is making the initial handshake and going, yes, these people want to talk to each other, and then it gets out of the way, and then your computers are connecting uh, to each other through the internet without a server. That being said, that there are some new open source protocols for servers, which are 
uh, designed to expand uh, the capacity of WebRTC. And we are uh, collaborating on a, uh, another project that um, has already implemented that, uh, a server infrastructure, uh, which allows the scalability to increase to around 30 or 40 um, using that server. And, and the performance is really quite good. Um, we didn't see any noticeable, visible difference in latency. So we are investigating that, whether that can also be, there could be a version of Live Lab, um, which would remain like this for people that are uh, really need uh, very low latent, high resolution uh, production, and then also a version that would be scalable using a server infrastructure. So hopefully something that is not too far in the future, hopefully within this year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have questions that they, they want to uh, ask with everybody else? If not, I think that we will um, stop live streaming now and just take like another five to 10 minutes. We won't go too far past three. Um, but just to have a little bit more informal hearing from people like what they are interested in using Live Lab for, and maybe if they're interested in seeing different features added, just have a little bit of, of a more informal conversation. Um, and yeah, I mean, in, in general for, for folks, I've, are, are we, we're still live, right? Um, you can visit culturehub.org slash live lab. And um, you can also email live lab at culturehub.org um, with any questions or um